Dungheap had that really ugly daughter. Well, here she is, our special guest. Come in, Miss Cabbage Water. In springtime and in summer, the thing I like the best to do is to get out of my doors and spend many happy hours tending to my little vegetables and plants and flowers. Yeah! <laughs> I love my little garden with its flora and its fauna, but the thing I really like the best is my little compost corner. <laughs> my idea of heaven, and yours as well, I'm sure, is to be up to my fetlocks in all kinds of manure. <laughs> to horses and to piggies and to cows for all their dung. No praises too high or too great can ever quite be sung. With all this stuff within your soil, you'll get a lot of mileage. Oh, how I love that evil smell of all that rotting silage. <laughs> My compost corners! <laughs> Famous people come from far and wide. Like Roger Welf and Wadney, that whack from Wotherwine. Excuse me popping in, quiz. <laughs> Please don't mind me butting in, but I'd just like to grab the chance to do a little bit chat and get these cutting in. It's a really wonderful hybrid world. It smells a bit like lime. Can I do a little chat? No, we haven't time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't time. It's only fair to warn you. I've got another very special guest coming here on Compost Cornea. Compost <laughs> 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 Well, me old pal, me old beauty. Oh, look at Miss Cabbage Water. She's a right old cutie. Excuse me, me lads. I just thought I'd get rid of that, me old system. And... <laughs> I be Gabriel Swamp, and my wife's name be Lorna. I got you there now, haven't I, yes. And we did all our courting behind my compost corner. Compost corner! And now when I get to whiff of rotten eggs, cowpats and dung, I thinks of my dear wife and the happiness she has brung. Well, ah. thanks very much, <laughs> good Gabriel, but Lord. listen to my advice. Go off home and have a bath. You smell just like your wife. Thank you, thank you. We can't even... I was voted Miss Cabbage Water back in 47. I was also Miss Totnes down in Bogner, down in Devon. I was also been Mother Haystack in Tring and California, but my lifelong ambition is the crown, Miss Compost Cornier. Miss Compost Cornier! Well, best of luck, young cabbage. I think you're bound to win. You're just a white proportion, not too fat and not too thin. Well, I think it should be a walk over unless you be double crossed. Her perfume smells of long dead worms. Her whiff of old compost. <laughs> And your dress sense be like a pig that's have a real good rummage. Your face looks like a TV star. Rackle Welsh. No words will go. So best of luck, young cabbage. Your beauty really shows. I ain't like the Andy in my garden. <laughs> Don't stir the crows or something like that. Really. <laughs> yeah, crows. Just keep talking. <laughs> Excuse me, are you sure I haven't got time to send a quick message to my girlfriend? Woly poly rosemary periwinkle. <laughs> <laughs> She's a rather rotund receptionist for the crew branch of Rolls Royce. I'll be getting home rather late tonight, and it's only fair to warn her. No, you can't. We haven't time. That's all from the compost corner. Thank you, Mr. Carson, please. See which of you four are the heaviest. You are the Francis Carson. Your body weighs six stone. Your brain weighs half. Your mother weighs nine stone. Your combined weight is fifteen stone half an ounce. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, Mr. Prowse, if you would please be so kind. Stand on that. I thought you'd been there. You are Dave Prowse. Your weight is eighteen stone. Correction. Please take your hands out of your pockets. <laughs> your weight is 16 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Paz. Thank you. Do you think Daddy was yeah, going to be the kind of uh, Can we get off? <laughs> I'm going to bed, boy. Give it. I think it's. Uh, you gotta give it a belt. Give it a belt. <laughs> give it another one. Give it another. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Big Beautiful. Daddy. Uh, Mr. Beautiful. Manning, if you'd be so kind, please. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want me on? Where do you want me on? Where do Lenny Kinte, a direct descendant of the African, continues his desperate quest for his identity. Come on, my child. Come on. We must continue this desperate search for my ancestors. I know they're there. There's Chicken George. You hear that one? Come on. There's, there's Chicken George. Listen to me now. There's, there's Kizzy. There's Tom the Blacksmith. And I, I know over there there's Stevie Wonder. Over there there's, there's Cyril Regis and his brother Bogner. I know. Oh, all, my, all my people are there. I must have my roots. Where are my roots? Now, if you want the best route, lad, uh, <laughs> go back down that jewel carriage where that you came from. Yes, yes. Aye. We're having bread and condensed milk for dinner. Dinner. Russell and Amanda Payne, age nine. But now, once again, chime for the Phantom Flamplinger Challenge. And this week, Paul Henry, Benny from Crosses, is taking on the Phantom. As you know, over the years, the Phantom has taught, sorted all sorts of people out, done them untold harm. This is his final challenge. You ready? You got all the pies over there. Now, all Benny from Crosses has asked for is a record player. No pies, no buckets. He's asked for a record player. Okay, so, are you ready? It was a tense moment, this. Okay, best of luck. I don't... What? Hang on, he's, he's putting on... He's putting on his record! The Phantom can't take this! The Phantom can't stand for this sort of stuff! He's got no answer to this! He's beaten all sorts of trained karate people, black belts, but once again, the blackest beat in the cosmos! This is the first time I've ever seen him! special competition that we set earlier in the morning. Um, it's been won by a nice little lad. Uh, you're just four years old, aren't you? That's right. Um, now, you've won a four-week holiday in Disneyland with your parents. You've won a brand new Rolls Royce Corniche for your father. I bet he'll be pleased. You've won a year's supply of sweeties of your choice. And ATV have agreed to put £5,000 worth of premium bonds into trust with your father or your guardian until you're 21. OK, what do you think of that? Thanks, Dad. Shut up! Stupid! Good morning! Good morning! Ladies and gentlemen, this record proudly presents the Four Bucket Tears! Morning, and with the classic sound of the Bucket of Water song ringing in your ears, this part of the telethon is a celebration of what many people still fondly remember as the very peak of British light entertainment. And what many others, perhaps more accurately, remember as utter rubbish. Yeah. A celebration of a decade of Saturday mornings when Noel Edmonds dominated our screens on one channel with his silly Division 4 footballer's haircut and his cootie-looking little beard, talking to nice, wholesome, cuddly children about 
Max box collections and trying to swap almost anything for Keith Chegwin. And we <laughs> dominated the screens on the other channel, the ITV channel, talking to evil smelling jammy faced kids and stuffing plates of beans and live ferrets down their trousers. Yes, the old swap shop studio always looked like a nice, bright, squeaky clean sort of place. And ours looked like a rubbish dump. Indeed, ours was a rubbish dump. It's sort of place where you use a pig as an air freshener and skin air break it to tidy up. So tonight, we'll try to briefly relive some of those golden moments. Are you sure that's Lenny? Of course it's Lenny. Come on, Lenny, get up. Do one of your impressions. Come on, convince Chris. Come on. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm convinced it's Lenny. <laughs> Definitely Lenny. Definitely. Actually, his impressions are a great deal better than I remember. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, there's no need to keep adjusting, adjusting your horizontal hold and hitting the side of your set. Yes, Sally James is having another baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been asked by the London Weekend lawyers here, Cray, Cray, Biggs, Corleone, Nixon, DeLorean, Guinness and Thatcher, <laughs> to make it quite clear this child is nothing to do with any member of this production team. No way. <laughs> Sadly. Of course, Saturday mornings were a nice enough time to work, but one of the problems of a live show at this time of night is lycanthropy. Mm. Is that like chicken puff? Uh, no, it's the fear that many people have in the wee small hours of the creature men used to call the werewolf. It is, of course, absolutely without foundation. The whole idea of a wolf man really is a rather ridiculous notion. Old wives' tale, perhaps, has been handed down since the Middle Ages. The very idea, the very concept that a normal, barely normal humanoid might transform into a beast. After dark is very altogether too silly for, for worse. The very very notion of anyone becoming suddenly thick with matted hair and developing fangs that could bite through the backbone of a bison is superstitious nonsense. And I think indeed I know that we can we can guarantee this audience here tonight total safety. I hope you find that reassuring.